Hello and welcome back. This is Jessie of Jessie at Home and I'm going to show you how to make an additional little dimensional flower in the center of this six petal flower. So to start off let's take a look at this flower. We have, um, the, we have the three rounds. Round one is this green, round two is this kind of gold, and round three is our um, purplish burgundy wine <laughs> wine I guess anyway the important rounds to look at for this are the green and the gold okay and you can see in round two in our gold round that our cluster stitches have kind of been smushed together into groups of two because of the way that round three works we want to look at one of those groups of two and we want to look at the stitch from round one the green stitch that comes right into the center of that cluster. These are the stitches we're using, the round one stitches that are right in the center of each of these clusters. These are the stitches we'll be working into. Okay, I wanted to show you that before I have my hook on top of everything and the yarn going and you get all confused. So it's just a little easier to see it right here. And to start off, just as we've done before, you can make a slip knot or you can just wrap your yarn around your hook and hold on and go from there. To begin, we're going to slip stitch into the post, into this right underneath the center of one of these sets of two. So into the post of row one, right underneath the, the little group of two from round two. Okay, we're not actually going all the way down here like you would do in a normal post stitch. We're actually just gonna go right here and just catch that little bit. Okay, so here we see these two cluster stitches that are smushed together. We're kind of going down underneath one and up underneath the other one in order to catch that center bit. And now we're just going to make a slip stitch right through there. It's not the easiest thing to do. It kind of requires some finagling. Okay, but there aren't very many of these to make. It's just to attach things. Now we're going to chain two and we're going to skip over, we're not going around this stitch right here, we're going to skip over to the next little set of clusters and again we're going to go down, un down underneath the first of those two clusters and back up underneath the second and pull through everything to make a slip stitch. Chain two going underneath the next set of cluster stitches. Slip stitch. Yep. Slip stitch. Chain two. Okay. We're skipping this one. We're going underneath the next set of cluster stitches. Chain two. Here's another set of cluster stitches down under the first one, up from under the second one, slip stitch, chain two. And we have one more. Okay, so now you can see we've gone all the way around and we're back to that beginning slip stitch. I'm not going to bother with um, slip stitching back into the same spot or anything, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip stitch into my first chain two. So you see <clears throat> right there, that's our first chain two. I'm going to insert my hook into that chain two and just make a slip stitch. Okay, now I'm going to make a half double crochet into that same chain two, then two double crochets into the same chain two. another half double crochet and a slip stitch. Okay, And that's one little petal. I'm going to keep making all six of my petals by making slip stitch, half double, 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 half double slip stitch in each chain two space. So let's do that again. Slip stitch, half double, 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 half, slip, 
Okay, I'm going to do that four more times to go all the way around. Okay, I've now gone all the way around and I've done my last slip stitch in my last um, and my last petal. And I'm going to clip my yarn. I'm actually going to clip a really long amount of yarn because there's something I, a little trick I want to explain to you that you have the option of doing, but if you do it, you need to make sure to leave yourself, well, like really a foot of yarn is plenty. I've probably left a little more than I need. Um, and now all you do, you've made your last slip stitch, okay? Now all you do is you pull that through. Now, you can go to the back and you can weave in. You can weave in this one underneath this petal and weave in this end underneath this petal, making sure to do at least two, churn, two chain, um, direction changes if you want, okay? So you can do that to weave in your ends. The other option is first just weaving in this end, and let me show you that. This is the end we started with. So it is just a regular end size, okay? And to weave it in, I'm just going underneath this petal and I'm going to make my first direction change without pulling too tight and my second direction change. And then I'm going to clip that yarn, okay? Now, you could have a regular size end here and then weave in this side the same way. Your other option is to a kind of trace, weave this yarn. Here, I'll just show you. Since I did cut this long tail, I will show it to you. How about that? All right, that's probably the smart move on my behalf. Now, I'm going to start off and I'm going to make sure that I actually go all the way down to here so that I'm really pulling down this space between the petal. If I pull it up, then these two petals won't have the little separation between them like the rest of it. So I'm going to make sure that I go all the way down to here to start weaving in my yarn. And I'm going to kind of weave it, the needle, see the needle is going right here all the way up to the center of that petal. I made sure to start all the way down at the bottom first. <clears throat> okay, so now I have the yarn coming up from the center of the petal. What I'm going to do now is catch just a little bit of the center of the bottom of this petal. Just catch a tiny bit of it. Okay. You can even actually kind of go down through this way if you want to. Just be careful, there we go, when you pull it through that you're not snagging things. And now I'm going to go down the other side of this petal to the valley in between the petals. And now is when I want to kind of just finesse things a little bit. And what that does is it holds that flower petal down. Let me show you a second one, and then we'll kind of look at the reasons for this. I'm going to weave up the side of this petal but making sure that I'm keeping everything in the back. You don't want to be able to see it from the front, though it is the same color, so it's not like it would be a disaster. And then again, catch a tiny bit of the bottom of this petal. Make sure you're actually catching something. And then go back down the other side to the valley in between the petals. Remember, you don't want to pull too tight because you don't want to gather up your flower here. You just want enough to hold things down. And the reason for this is because you see how these petals that I haven't tacked down can kind of pull up like this. Um, if you like that look, that's fine. If you're making something that's going to be washed a lot, like if you're using this um, in the center of a motif that's going to be on an afghan or something, just keep in mind that as you wash it, the more you wash it, the more this is going to pull up. Okay, I have one that I made the, this with, and the petals now kind of do this, which doesn't bother me. But if it's going to bother you, keep in mind that as you wash it and as it's used, they're not going to lay flat so much. You can try blocking it, 
but if it's something that's getting a lot of use, you might have to continually block it in order to keep it to lie flat. So if it's going to get a lot of use and you want it to lie flat, I do recommend tacking down the, the petals like this. Okay, And this is something where if you're making a big piece with a lot of these motifs, um, you may not want to put this little center flower in all of them. You may want to just put it in some of them. If you're making something like a little hair thing, I kind of like it not tacked down for the hair thing because I like it poofing up if you're going to stick this on top of a headband for a little girl. I like having that dimension to it. But if this is going to be a brooch for maybe for a woman or just a brooch, a little pin for anybody, in that case I like it pin tacked down. You decide what makes you happy and you go with that. You now have the option of how to make it so that it goes free and how to make it so that it's tacked down. So you decide what works best for you and go for it.